If you live in America and you go out and talk to another human, the chances are good that you will disagree about nuclear energy. In the United States today, about half of the population is pro-nuclear power and the other half is against it. But why is that? Does anyone even know anything about this fabled nuclear power? Chances are good that they do not. For instance, did you know that there are currently 56 nuclear power plants chugging away in the US right now? I'll bet you didn't. Those plants produce around 20% of the power we use in the states. In France, around 70% of their power comes from nuclear plants, and worldwide there are currently 440 nuclear power plants working like dogs that don't get no love. Another thing I'm pretty sure you didn't know is that when the scary things happened with the nuclear power plants, basically no one died or was even injured. The death toll at Chernobyl, around 100 people. Three Mile Island, zero deaths. Fukushima, also zero deaths. If you work in a nuclear power plant for a year, you will literally get less radiation exposure than you would if you made one cross-country flight in a 747. So if nuclear power is already semi-mainstream, why is there so much confusion and contrary opinion about it? And more importantly, will it ever take off as a realistic supply of power that can bring us into the dawn of the green age? To find out, let's look at the three big challenges facing nuclear energy. Luke, Han, and Leia. Oh, I mean, fear, waste, and cost. Fear, you're up! As I said before, there have been three major nuclear power plant incidents in the past. Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, and Fukushima. These are one of the main things that people think about when they first think about nuclear energy, and one of the reasons more people will point to it as being unsafe. But again, the damage that these three incidents did was actually very minimal, especially considering how much damage the other forms of energy like coal or oil do on a regular basis. The main concern with these incidents was the fear that a silent killer might be out there on the loose, silently slicing up cells and turning all those poor townsfolk into mashed up versions of themselves. But that's really not how these things go down. You are more likely to get killed by the long-term health effects of breathing in fossil fuel byproducts than you are to be torched by a nuclear power plant problem. Even the exploding nuclear fallout kind of problem. When thinking about the dangers of things that generate electricity, and therefore our refrigerators, we have to think about it in deaths per unit of electricity. And in that sense, nuclear power wins hands down. Try not to think about how your refrigerators are fueled by dead people for the rest of the video. Waste, your turn. Just like all other forms of energy input, nuclear energy has waste material that is formed when it is used. Unlike other forms of energy creation, nuclear power has radioactive plutonium as a byproduct. There are three different forms of waste. Low level, gloves, suits, hats, things that were contaminated by being in the same area as radioactive things, mid-level, nuts, bolts, containers, things that were actively touching radioactive materials, and high-level, things that are actively radioactive, like imagine dragons. The dragons are the one that most people are concerned about, which only makes up about 3% of the total of all nuclear waste. The bummer part about this waste is that it will be deadly for a literal 1 million years after it has been created. The only people that will be alive to see the expiration date will be those stubborn enough to sit through the lines at the DMV. There are currently two ways to deal with the waste. Bury it way deep underground to keep it from coming into contact with iguanas, or recycle it to create a closed loop cycle that doesn't need to create more waste. The first option sounds pretty good until you think about how, oh, maybe that's only a very short term solution to a very real problem. But hey, Let's not say we don't want to die in the future and then get burned alive in a natural gas fire the next day. The second option sounds very good. Oh, but by the way, it will cost you both of your arms and your neighbor's firstborn child in expenses. It's not cheap to run massive recycling facilities. Also, there is still a lot of nuclear waste generated by it, so same boat as option one. Cost. Hit it. All of these renewable energy options that have been around and growing in popularity for a while have steadily been decreasing in cost over time. Not so for nuclear. This is almost certainly because nuclear power is the Dwight Schrute of the American office and no one wants to deal with it. Wind, solar, hydro, these all started off expensive and then got cheaper 
because people saw how effective they were and then put money into them. Let's just not think about how effective they also were at chopping up birds and fish. Nobody cares about the birds and fish though. Maybe that's why they became so popular? Should we be marketing nuclear power as effective bird and fish killing machines? I'm off topic. It's expensive, okay? That's the point I'm trying to make here. Is it worth it to try and make nuclear less expensive when there are already other legitimate options? France thinks so. Germany for sure does not. Let me know in the comments. Are you pro-nuclear? If you're not, you can just keep it to yourself. Who died to power the refrigerator in your house?